Oh yeah, because there's a lot of this that this game, like, just just from the conversations that we've all had and about our perspectives in life, there's this game does just kind of confront you mm -hmm. with that and existential question. A lot question. of people have debated because after he sees all of his people have died, and his actions of turning off the blocker, um. <clears throat> His actions of turning off the blocker uh, led to the no mind discovering the signal, or the echo of the signal. Yeah, the echo they, of the eye. Yeah. And they came here and basically were looking for it, and in turn basically gave the Harthians the technology they needed to also explore. Yeah. So there's debate on what his little roar was. Was it joy? Was it sadness? It's really hard to tell because of like there's no and it, this game I mean it, like this I'm game does than... it so beautifully because there's not a single fucking spoken thing between you and the Noma and the the owl. You have I mean, no idea the... what he's feeling. You have no idea what he really wants, what he really thinks. All you can do is show him that his action that condemned him for an eternity basically gave hope back to the universe. Yeah. Because the Alks were basically ready to just give everything up, say, fuck it, nobody's allowed to fucking uh, have come to our fucking uh, birthday party. But this prisoner decided to go against the will of his own people and almost condemn himself completely to give other people a chance. Mm hmm I, I, like I said, I... <laughs> I think it's, I, I <laughs> I'm, I'm tearing think it's, up now. I was not okay <laughs> when I first did that, dude. I think it's both, in all honesty. Yeah, because I think it. I think it can be both. It can be both uh, full of joy and sadness because we we don't always just feel one emotion when we when we do the things that we do. Like that's why we have things like bitter, like the. It's why we have the word bittersweet when describing an emotion. It's yeah. the fact that we ourselves, like, while while we know a lot of things in the universe itself and uh, our impact on it can sometimes be incredibly small, at the same time, however, it's not, it's not 100% uh, bleak. Like, I, because I, I've talked to Slur about this plenty of times, uh, and it's how I kind of fell into my own philosophy, because where a lot of people fall into this nihilistic attitude towards just even, like this, the heat, the heat death of the universe, uh, there are some people that are nihilistic, and it's like there's nothing we can change, and nothing's ever going to be good. And then there's... I... I, my personal perspective is as an absurdist. Yeah, nothing matters and we're all specks of dust, but that's why you find like what matters to you. Exactly. So, I've said this before on the previous stream, but I played this game uh, shortly after my uh, brother passed away. And um, the whole uh, essence of basically acceptance because it is something that eventually happens, like you said, that eventually both the universe will just, you know, explode and die. Um, and of course, we'll all be dead, gone. Yeah, don't don't ever tell that to a to a toddler. They will yeah. ball their eyes out because they don't even they they, they well, barely yeah. understand their shapes and colors, let alone the heat death of the universe. So, um, the themes of this game, just like it's beautiful in that sense, because it's all about acceptance of the end. And letting everything go. And that's what we're about to see again with the ending. But I was going to say, that's what the Harthians essentially are. That they're very easygoing. Well, no, not all of them. Well, oh, right. Because both, uh... both, uh, both uh, Chert and... Um, fuck, I always forget his name. Uh, Chert and the other guy, the guy with the banjo. Uh, we'll see it in a minute. But, um, yeah, he he freaks the fuck out. Yeah, because he well well he well he's well he he's terrified. He's terrified of like everything, and that's the kind of the joke that the other Harthians have like to kind of mess with them. Is that even though he's the biggest one, he's kind of a big baby, and like when you talk to him, he's like you know freaking out about like the black hole that's in the middle of his like fucking planet that he's exploring, and how everything's falling apart, and he's so scared to even like move around and shit like that. 
Yeah. So yeah, there are certain things that. That's. Sorry, I gotta remember how to. I gotta. This is the part I didn't. But, really mo but most of the Harthians normally do have this uh, chill attitude. That's why, like, yeah, for the most part. It's why, uh, like, the biggest example being Gabbro. <laughs> Oh, Gabros, yeah, he's, he's chill. Gabros literally on, like, a planet where, like, things are throwing you around left and right, and his solution is to just get on a fucking hammock. And he's just chill. And that's why he's called, that's why people say that's, like, why he's called Gabbro, because he's, he's your bro. And, like, he's the only, he's also the only other person he trapped in the, um, in the time loop, uh, with me. So, like, there, like, there are things that, like, he, like, sees and stuff like that that he's just kind of chill with. And like it's okay with, and like I said, that's kind of the whole premise of the of the game is that like yeah, there are just certain things you can't really control. Yeah. And um, like that's just what it is. Is it this one? Sorry, it's gonna piss me off. I fucked this up. I should practice this. I thought I would be okay with this. I got the other pieces. I got the coordinates to the eye. I got the location of the vessel. I get and to prep for the perfect ending, I went to the quantum moon and found uh, Solana. And those are the four pieces. And, oh, the fourth piece being, sorry, the third piece to beat the game is uh, the Ashwin project, which is what we're about to go into. Right. Um, okay, yeah, it's this one. Um, the four, the third piece is to get the core from the Ashwin project, which is what powers your, um, basically traveling back in time thing. Um, yep, that's why when when we first did our Outer Wilds ventures, we, uh, like we. When he when you grab that, it's like okay, if you die, it's over. <laughs> Pretty much, which is what makes it so difficult to fucking end it. Because hey, Anglo Kirsch will now. Okay, I'm a little too early, but it's okay. Um, do you, uh, so what do you, what's your personal philosophy? Like, are you more of a, a nihilist, an absurdist, a realist? I mean, I would like to say I'm an optimist and a realist. Yeah, I I. When it comes to what's immediately happening around me, I'm I'm a realist with an optimistic. Like, I want things to get better, but I know they don't happen overnight. Change, change rarely ever happens so fast. Especially, uh, just when talking about the subject of humanity. Okay, it's this one. Sorry, I had to remember which fucking one it was. Because we are stubborn creatures. A little bit. All right, <laughs> and I will show you the uh, two endings that were added post that DLC. I think they're pretty hilarious as well. Mm -hmm. And so this is how you get into the center of the Ashwin project. Which this material that's in here, by the way, is being form is formed from the the core of uh, uh, Timber Hurt. Timber Hurt's material somehow warps gravity. But it's so dense that it could take a lot of pressure. So if you notice that the loop doesn't technically restart until like uh, way past uh, when the Ashwins are destroyed, it's because this um, this metal and density basically holds it down for just that long enough for the data to be sent back in time. How advanced would this technology? The have Nomai to be? are fucking cracked, dude. Like, I'm, remember I'm they got here by teleporting. <laughs> Do not forget that. Yeah, I mean, well, teleported to get here. And I'm thinking of like I, other science fiction races as well. Like these guys might be even above people like the Eldar. Yeah, they're really fucking advanced. Like remember, That's the crazy. Eldar like discovered the webway. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Are they now. Dis He almost face planted into that cactus. Shut up. He was a brave warrior until he ran face first into a cactus. <laughs> Alright, dude. Alright, now for time for him to concentrate. <laughs> Certainly doesn't help that it plays the. <laughs> Well, actually, I really like it because it plays it plays end times, but it plays it in an upbeat, upscaled version. Right. And I find that like really fascinating. That um, so the song is called End Times, 
but this version of the song is called Final Voyage. Oh, by the way, that song that made me fucking absolutely ball my eyes out when you showed the uh, prisoner, the um, the uh, the everything that happened post his death. It's called Echoes of the Eye. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. so that's why I was like don't look it up because uh, don't look up the song that I love in this game because it it is a spoiler the soundtrack of this game is amazing it's like there's a like like it, I'm bad at this game but my god do I love its soundtrack oh yeah also the soundtrack has this song has two versions of it too <clears> when you <throat> enter the fucking dark bramble <laughs> See, I, the more I think about it, like, uh, I don't, like, the Dark Bramble doesn't, like, the more I think about it, it doesn't really scare me in that aspect. How? Uh, well, in comparison to, uh, what we were seeing in, uh, what we were seeing, uh, with the visions and the, the virtual world, is I can still see, and if I can still see where I'm going, I can fix, uh, I can fix any errors I would make. Alright, I love you, dude, but I need you to shut up for a second. I was going, yes, you could stop for a moment. If you bump into them, does that set them off too? Yes. I want to point out that I am going forward. Yeah. I am it's... pushing forward on the stick. However, <laughs> I am pushing it at the smallest point in the fucking dead zone. Because... Yeah, you may as well be going out. You may as well be pointing. Uh, you may as well be uh, uh, putting your head out the window and just blowing. <laughs> Basically. Ah! <sighs> <sighs> Sorry, I really don't like that part, guys. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I really fucking don't. I really fucking don't. That part's fucking freaks me out, and especially how high the stakes are as well. Like, oh yeah, man, like, oh man. Like that's why hell. I was very tempted to try to <laughs> to just like. And notice that once you... you finally get past this, you're safe. The music starts playing again. <sighs> I was very Dude. tempted to while you were going to just go like boo. <laughs> That might have given me a heart attack. Drink out. <laughs> Fuck! <sighs> and yeah, I said this to Wyatt uh, yesterday. I'm not a tattoo guy. I don't really like tattoos. However, if I were to get a tattoo, I would want the coordinates. I have it on the. I have a bumper sticker on the back of my car of the coordinates as well, just in case there happens to be a fellow explorer out there. 
the location of said hypothetical tattoo uh, wasn't exactly odd. It's just uh, not exactly where I would think to the best place to put a tattoo. Mm -hmm. It would either be the back of my uh, neck or the like, basically top of my shoulders. You know the Sublime uh, album cover art? Yeah. Where like they have Sublime back across the shoulders. Basically that. I'm surprised you wouldn't go for like just the stereotypical like putting it on like your forearm or something. No. That way you can look at it whenever you want. Kind of like the thing. I mean, I don't need to look at it. I know where it is. But if anybody else wants to know where it is, they can look at it. That's fair. I like so, even yeah. though I've seen it a thousand times because it's it's just attached to my body. Excuse me. I want to point out that yes, the eye of the universe is literally right there. Yeah. That's the craziest part of it. I do love this bit too. As you walk, and like the because this essentially is a quantum object, you're, and like essentially entangled with like the singularity of like the whole fucking universe. Right. That's what the eye represents. Only the eye of like, storm. It gets so fucking dark, and then the lighting flashes, because every time you look away. Yeah, like every, everything is essentially in superposition, and thus. Uh, because it's not actively being observed, it's moving yeah. around. This is probably one of the only games I can think of that actually, like, uses shit like that. Mm -hmm. Alright, now here's the question, what, can I pull off the front foot? I mean, if you want to try. Because there's a way to do it. God, ugh, no, I'm so fucking pressurized. It freaks me out. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I fucked it up. Damn it. <laughs> there's a there's a way to do a front flip because of the way the gravity inverts here. So yeah, if you time it and like I guess I got too close to one of those rocks and it fucked up. But yeah, if you time it you could do a front flip into the fucking the eye. I don't I kinda wish like we could animate because I would just like to imagine like you going like yeah and, and then, then you stop halfway fuck. through then land in the land in the family guy pose. This okay, this bit. This bit. I don't think it'll ever make my stomach not turn. Oh yeah, I don't get normally get motion sick, and yet some I like I felt my stomach lurch like a second. <laughs> Outer Wilds Ventures was founded by Feldspar, Ghost and Slate, Hornfeld to explore Soul System and of the Universe. The Nomai never got to see it for themselves, but thanks to their efforts and technology, a Harthian was able to reach the eye of the universe. The radio tower on Silver Hearth was built to receive transmission from our deep space satellite and housed some of the last ever photos taken of the entire solar system. One of those photos revealed the existence of an invisible ring world inhabited by a species whose presence in our solar system predated even the Nomai. And of course, my favorite entry. Of all the life forms who will perish in the oncoming death of the universe, we will miss the anglerfish the least. Oh yeah, fu like you can you stare at its skeleton for just a moment. Fuck, Fuck this these thing. Fuck <laughs> these that things. guy. Fuck you. You don't see it, but I'm flicking off my computer screen right now. Like the, Dang. like I'm not even. Oh. <laughs> at the end of our at the end of its lifespan, our sun collapsed under its own gravity and exploded in a violent supernova. The Nomai who came to our solar system were following a signal from the Eye of the Universe. We never figure out how they died. Oh shit, um... I didn't actually go into the interloper on this playthrough, sorry guys. They died via the, um, explosion of the interloper. Basically, it's a comet that came into our solar system, and once it got too close to the sun, it unleashed gas, um, it unleashed, uh, it unleashed, uh, ghost, ghost matter into the universe. A big ball of gas. Look, this is a, you know, the first point in this life in just put no, they're galaxies. And this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than previously imagined. I, I think I knew this about. 
this is odd. According to my redshift calculations, every single galaxy in this image is moving away from us. In fact, the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving away. It's almost as if the entire universe is expanding. If that's true, was everything was everything closer together in the past? And how far back can we ex extrapolate? Did the universe have a beginning? Hmm. Oh yeah, it has to. It has to. Let's go see it. Now that actually does is a kind of terrifying image. A little bit. That like with all the stars burning out. No. Oh. So I do love this, is that the eye of, so this was known as the uh, Ancient Blade, the eye basically is being set upon by a harpy. So what the eye turns into is Timber Hurt. Mm hmm Because it's weird, like, peacefulness, because it is home. But yeah. As these galaxies just wink away, this is the end of the universe. Everything is dying. There is no going back. It's all gone. It's tragic, but it's peaceful. It's something, like I said, about when my brother passed away. This game really helped me with the inevitability of everything and how, yeah, it's okay to freak out. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. But what really matters is coming to accept it. Yeah, like it is very much like a lot of how and the then species ready have reacted. For the, ready for the moment that made everybody shit their pants. Do you hear music? So just like in the game, when you're lost, you use your signal scope to find your fellow man. It's a really beautiful reincorporation of everything you've learned about the I like another one of my favorite games of all time, but you know, we'll talk about that another time. But you gather the first piece, you gather the first instrument, and that brings uh, Rayback, I think his name is? Yeah, Rayback, so you remember the Rayback, yeah? Yep. It's, um, it's not quite time yet. I'm pretty sure we'll need the others for this next part. We'll need, you know, everyone. No rush, take your time. May not even exist. Here. Not even exist here. Yeah, because who's to say during uh, like with some something like this that uh like right. time is a linear concept that even we that we understand of. Yeah, but what exists here anymore? When you're in the state of quantum, yeah, no. yeah, so yeah exactly. Get, uh, get Wyatt. <laughs> mm, save that. <laughs> Let's head over here. I 
and I love this because he made a poem in the um, in the uh, on Timber Hearth in the uh, Quantum Glaive. But yeah, every time you look at the poem, it's a different set of the. Uh, it's a different verse. Stanza. And yeah, and there's the all of these as well. <laughs> that was probably the that was probably like a ass clenching moment for you the very first time <laughs> oh a million percent <laughs> you just saw that and you just went ah! <laughs> all right this one still hurts <laughs> <laughs> so you only get this instrument if you went to the quantum moon and found uh uh solomon who unfortunately is alive and is dead. Yeah. And she's the last surviving Nomai. And these are the skeletons of the Nomai. <laughs> they point up to where she is. And you look back down. And they start to... They start climbing up. They start climbing a basically man-made ladder to her. And they create their ship. And you use that ship... To reach her. That's this one. So now, fellow viewers, if you look, everybody's got the realm account. But it feels like we're missing someone. Yeah, we're missing someone. No more. The Harthians. And the Alps. So it's interesting to know that even Solanum gathers around the Harthians to hang out. The prisoner stays off to the side. When my kind found the eye and realized that it was capable of, they were terrified. It was too diff it was too difficult a truth. Like a light too bright to look upon directly, it burned them. 
What they could not unlearn was hidden away in darkness, obfuscated, them lost. They did not want to see their story end. My kind weren't always like this. They weren't always so afraid. I did what I could to set things right, yet I'm still yet I am still of my kind. And you know what you know now what they did. I cannot promise our fear won't stay in your mind. And so a choice. Are you certain you want to remember me? <laughs> he gets to join us but that's the thing you could you could choose to basically not let him come but fuck that I was going to say whoever picks that is a bastard <laughs> I don't want to repeat my kinds of mistakes but if you're willing to take the risk then so am I and then he's there so let's get the fucking band going should we how do we start this? What It'd be doing? the banjo. You got it. I'll do my best. We're gonna take a minute because I love this bit. Thank, thank God we're like this won't get like copyrighted to death. <laughs> oh my God, I would take the risk. What do you say, time buddy? Ready to start the music? <laughs> This should be cool. What? Shall I begin? Well, then here I go. What do you say, then? Should I get out the old harmonica? Haha, <laughs> there goes nothing. Can't wait to play with the whole group again. Can I start? Okay, I won't let you down. Curious observate, a conscious observer has entered the eye. I wonder what happens now. Is it time to find out? The song is new to me, but I'm honored to be part of it. I hadn't dared to hope that anyone would hear the signal, and for, na for how briefly I set it free. Yet here we are. Are you ready for the final step? And it's time. Time to send our spark out into the darkness. Even if it's over now, I had a good time learning. But I think the rules are about to change. I learned a lot by the end of everything. The past is past now, but that's, you know, that's okay. It's never really gone completely. The future is always built on the past, even if we won't get to see it. <laughs> Still, it's um time for something new now. Wow. How long has it been since we uh, got to make music with everyone around a campfire? I'm really happy we're all here. You cut, you cut it a little close, don't you think? Well, it worked out all right in the end, I suppose. Ah, I hope there are beasties in the next one. I'll tell you that, this has been really fun, and I got to help make something pretty cool, so I've got no complaints. I mean, not me, exactly, but close enough. It's the kind of thing that makes you glad you stopped smelling the pine trees long. You know? <laughs> I love that one. Ugh. I believe we reached the end of our journey. All that remains is to collapse the innumerable possibilities before us. Are you ready to learn what comes next? I admire your curiosity, friend. Let's find out together. How beautiful. It's different than I envisioned. 
Whatever happens next, I don't think it's to be feared. Ugh. So yeah, the DLC just like I was worried that an expansion on this game would be a horrific thing. <sighs> but god damn it, I'm so glad to be proven wrong. This game still like it's 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 beautiful. I love the absolute shit out of this game. It's it's perfect. Like it's perfect down to the last details. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, you remind me of uh, the screen with that. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. <sighs> but yeah. So that's Outer Wilds, Deck of the Eye. It's... I mean, what can I say that I haven't already said? I can see why you would be worried, especially in today's day of uh, early access, uh, cons like games being released by AAA studios, completely unfinished, and still charging, like, God knows how much for them. And well, the, well, there the was a lot writing on this, essentially. Shout out to Andrew Pro Prowlo, fucking G. Um, there's the worry about adding to perfection. I mean, obviously the game isn't 100% perfect, it's got its issues here and there, but the game is ostensibly a 10 out of 10. It's great in almost every aspect that it uh, covers. So the, eye of, the idea of adding something to it has the caveat of potentially bringing it down. Oh yeah, and well, like, we all the, know... Uh, go ahead. Like, we all know, like, like for instance, like, even though, like, for this, for this example, Harry Potter's not perfect, but at the same time, it doesn't help that, like, with when it comes to adding things, remember Rowling essentially just kept tweeting after tweeting, just basically adding details, yeah. changing the story essentially so uh, that was the that was the fear for this because mobius knows what they're doing they've made a great game there was the fear of adding to it to actually make it worse but the idea of adding a precursor race to the precursor race and basically tying everything together because this is something you probably don't know and i probably didn't go well enough in our grand tour but the Nomai came to this uh, galaxy because this is where they heard the uh, Eye of the Universe. But when they got here, they couldn't hear it anymore. So that's so they teleported in. Dark Bramble fucked it up, and they basically had to basically eject from Dark Bramble. So that's where the best. That's where the vessel. Yeah, that's why they. Yeah, that's why there. there's right. stuff all over the place. Exactly. It's because they shot escape pods out from Dark Bramble and uh, colonized different planets. But over like the course of potentially hundreds of years. They went ahead and just made a civilization here, even though they feared that the Eye of the Universe stopped calling to them. There is multiple wall scrolls that show that they were worried and they were saddened as an entire race that they couldn't find the Eye of the Universe anymore because it stopped calling to them. The reason it stopped calling to them is because the Alps put the fucking blocker back on so the Giga Chad brain fucking um no my said fuck that we're gonna go find it how are we gonna find it we're gonna build this fucking space gun and fire a probe at every single possible direction and go backwards in time to send that data that is literally what they came to the conclusion of it's insanity and they almost did it 
they had to trigger a supernova to activate all their technology. The sun station, unfortunately, could not trigger said supernova. And so they left all their technology, and during this time, after they set everything up and it failed, a uh, new planetary body entered the system, which was the Interloper. It got too close to the sun and exploded, killing everything that wasn't aquatic in the uh, solar system. The Harthians are amphibians, whereas the Nomaya were mammals. So, unfortunately, they all died out. And Solomon was in the middle of her quantum uh, pilgrimage when this happened. So that's why in all states of the quantum moon being in the universe, she's dead. But she was also at the eye, so she was alive. Right. And yeah, it's it's fucking beautiful, dude. It's awesome. And yeah. <laughs> I don't see that enough, man. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, and I saw the, like the modding scene. I wonder. Uh, oh yeah, genuinely, what outer wild? I but... wonder what. <laughs> so this mural changes depending on the ending. If you get the three pieces and you get the normal ending, you don't mm. see the Noma expansion. If you don't do the DLC, you don't see the Alf expansion. But there will be three fires lit up, so pay attention. <laughs> okay now that was horribly depressing and sad and i'm dead hello hello mal let's and the let's put a load here